I love Atlanta a lot. Um, I totally love coming back there, come back there as much as possible. Um, obviously, Heretic is just about the only place you can hear me there. So I have an amazing relationship with them, and um, I would not trade that for anything. Um, so I, it's just I've been a DJ with them with with um, Heretic for the last like three or four years now, and um, it just works for me and it works for them and. I just love playing there, and I know I've heard from a lot of people that they like hearing me in that space. So I'm, I just really love coming back to Atlanta, and I love playing for Alan at the Heretic, and it's always the best experience. So yeah, I look, I definitely it's one of the gigs in my schedule that I definitely like. Oh, I can't wait for that weekend. Like I know it's gonna be good. Atlanta crowd actually is a lot of fun. I mean, I definitely, I def, I think that they kind of know me, and I kind of know them at this point. So it makes it um, exciting for me because I don't have to like, rely on probably as many like what you would call hits or top 40 things to keep them entertained. I think they kind of trust me. Well, I hope they do, actually, <laughs> to, kind of, to kind of maybe um, just branch out a little more so than I would in cities where they aren't that familiar with, with me, so where I don't quite have the, have the trust. I mean, I, don't, I never take advantage of that fact. I never go walk in there and be like, I'm just going to play whatever I want to play tonight, and this is all about me. I mean, I definitely always have the crowd in mind. I always want to make sure that I play at least those handful of anthems that are the ones of the moment, and I, I never try and go in and try and, like, you know, just be completely unrelatable. But at the same time, it's nice to be able to kind of drop in those couple of tracks that, um, you know, my, I might not be able to in a place where they're not as familiar, you know, with with, with me. I like being really close to the crowd. I don't like being like up in balconies or far away. Like I hate that. I like being right on, like you, like you say, right on top of a crowd that um, I can really judge what they want to hear a little better and just kind of get more on their same page, which to me is what it's like all about is us getting on the same page together. That was extremely sad. Um, as a matter of fact, I was just talking to some friends about this. I was more, I was a lot more sad than I thought I'd be. Um, and like, like I'm a huge Steve Jobs Apple fan. So excuse me, I was huge Steve Jobs. So whenever that, whenever he died, I was kind of, you were kind of, kind of prepared for it because you knew he had like stepped down and all these other things. So when he died, I was really sad. Um, but whenever Whitney Houston died, I actually started actually, it's going to sound weird, but I actually started to like cry. I was like, wow, it was just so shocking, and it was just so sad. And I think it was because she was such a big part of my professional career. She was a huge part of my childhood. I mean. I remember all those songs, like um, um, I Want to Dance with Somebody and all those 80s songs. I'm, I'm definitely old enough to remember those as a child, like the first time around. I, 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 didn't, I didn't discover Whitney after the fact. I discovered her everybody else discovered her, so I grew up with her. I certainly, absolutely, 100% do not think of myself in that way whatsoever. So that's very flattering that somebody else might think of me like that. I've never, I've never once tried to play up that angle. You'll never see me with my, with my shirt off online um first of all i don't have the best body to begin with secondly it's just that's just not the way that i want to sell myself um i don't want people to think about that when they come hear me dj not that i'm opposed to that i mean i know you know for other people they work out very hard at the gym and they're very proud of, of their physiques and i certainly don't mind looking at other people's physiques either but um i think in the kind of job that i'm in i'm trying i am trying to sell myself and but it's how i'm trying to sell myself and i'm not trying to sell myself in that way whatsoever. Um, if people see me like that, then, you know, I'm not going to complain. That's, that's the most, that's definitely super uber f flattering. But um, I, I want people to think about, about um, the kind of music that I play whenever I, whenever I, I DJ. And I want people to think about that side of me. I don't want people to be thinking about, you know, if they can go home with me or if like, well, I just don't, I don't want people to think, I just don't want people, I mean, obviously, you can't help but think that in this in this gay community. I mean, I think about that when I see people sometimes. I'm like, oh, you know, he looks, you know, looks play into things. But um, that's just not how I want to sell myself. But it's super flattering that people that people might think of me like that. That's that's also very weird to wrap my head around too. It's just just I don't know. But that's just that's part of our gay subculture, I guess. So goes goes with the territory. <laughs>